of the lawyers uh, representing these uh, persons who were arrested. They are part of a group called Lawyers for Protest Defense. He's joined me on the line. Sir, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. So our, our reporter just explained to us that the hearings were in two separate courts. Um, I don't know how you made your own arrangements. Uh, do you have one lawyer uh, representing one group in one courtroom? What was the arrangement today like? And talk to me generally about the the conduct of the of the prosecution and also the the, the issues that came up in court. Okay. So yes. So the arrangement two different courts. Um, circuit Court 6 and Circuit Court 10 in Accra. And um, as you mentioned, the Lawyers for Protest Defense, we are a group that have decided to dedicate our time to provide legal services to persons who may be for protest. So we have a number of available, so we were spread across different courts today. So we had about six of us in court six and somewhere around the same number in court five. So while the cases uh, were ongoing, we were in the different representing the arrested persons. So in court six, which is the court that I was in, the arrested persons were brought in three badges. So um, there was a first badge of about nine persons then a second batch also of around nine persons, and I think somewhere around six for the last the last batch of, of persons. So um attorney general represents the state someone from the attorney general department, the state attorney representing the state, um brought the charges against the accused person. So the charges were read to them, and all of them pleaded not guilty. And so um, we we went ahead to move an oral motion for the grant of bail, but for all of the three persons that were brought, the three badges uh, at court six, the applications were denied by the judge, and the same happened in the three other cases that were before the court at court ten. So the court adjourned for the next date to be on eight October, twenty twenty four. So that is uh, mainly transpired in court today. I see. Uh, granting of bail is a discretion that is exercised by the judge, but it would also be dependent on how convincing you, the counsel, would be and the evidence and arguments you would put forth to explain why your clients deserve to go home to their families. Is it the case that you could not prove that there may not be a flight risk and they may not go and interfere with police investigations and all the other issues that would come up in the consideration for whether or not bail be granted? Yes. So, as as you rightly mentioned, the grant of bail is discretionary. But the jurisprudence of this country suggests that there is a thing in favor of the accused person when a motion for bail is moved. So although traditionally it is the accused person, the lawyers, that will move for bail, the court should be inclined to grant it unless the that flight risk. So today we're able to present to the court first on human rights violations where these people have been denied access to their lawyers, access to their families, um, access to food and water. And most of them have been subjected to inhumane treatment, including beatings with marks on their bodies. Uh, we also had instances of persons who are uh, one lady who was diabetic, for instance, and also asthmatic, um, who has been in custody since Sunday with that um, family or with lawyers. So it brought all of these under a human rights argument that we cannot trust the state and its agencies to take care of these people. And so remanding them to the custody of the state will be basically subjecting them to that same condition they have been under since their time of arrest. And then we also went into the accessi to discuss with the, with, with the court that the conditions the court would take into consideration, such as that the person will commit an offense when um, he is granted bail, or that the person has a fixed place of abode and surety, Court that there were people in sanctuaries for these people, 
they have fixed places of abode and all of that. So there was no stone left unturned. Uh, it was the AG's argument that um, there will be a, a, a flight risk without providing any reason. I think the only reason that she mentioned was that there was no firm indication that the people actually lived at the places that we informed the court that they had their fixed place of abode. And that is surprising because aside the fact that the police took their caution statement at which they asked them where they live and at which they were asked the jobs that they do. Um, also, even beyond that, we, we should also have it in our minds that the court cannot say that because um, we, we have not demonstrated that they actually live at those places, when these persons have not been allowed access to their phones, access to anyone to confirm any of these things or even conference with their, uh, their lawyers, then the court now imposing that burden on, on the accused persons that they have failed to demonstrate that they actually live. very worrisome. So we, we, we did what we could, and we are, we are hoping that um, subsequently, if we, if we regroup and we decide that we would appeal the decision of the court, another court will look at the, the same arguments and the facts and then possibly that court will, will give a different decision. Which means that there's a consideration for going the human rights angle at the court or at the high court. Yeah, yeah, we, we will consider that. But because at this time we are not really into the merits of the matter, because the case was today basically was the arraignment, and then we used the opportunity to ask for bail. So now it's been that is will commence to prove um, the guilt of the accused person. Proceedings will really commence. So we will be waiting for that. But then there are clear violations of human rights by the police and the protesters. So definitely we are considering filing a separate case against the state and then the IGP on the, uh, on the abuses of the rights of these persons who are arrested. I see. What about the leadership of the group? A reporter says he did not see them. Um, do you know whether or not there's a plan for them to come to court later or they were brought in a different court? Yeah, so I think the, lead, the leadership of Democracy Hub um, and then the Fix the Country group, I think most of them were brought today. It was just Oliver Bakavoma who was not presented to the court today, who was not arraigned. And our indication is that, you know, Oliver turned himself in just yesterday, and the police have 48 hours within which to bring him to court. We are of the opinion that they are trying to just um, keep him within the 48 hours. So instead of bringing him, I would rather want to bring him tomorrow, so that at least he would have stayed um, beyond today and then um, be brought tomorrow. So it will be within the 48 hours, but... That is more inconvenience to him. So I, I, I believe that is what the state is trying to do. So he wasn't brought today. I understand. Okay. Um, sorry, we are losing you there. But thank you. Thank you so much. I think you, 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 you've, you've, you've done a fair job explaining to us what happened. Thank you so much for speaking to us here. You're welcome. That's uh, Noah Adamte. He's a lawyer, a member of a group of lawyers called Lawyers for Protest Defense. Uh, he and other lawyers were representing about 40 members of the Democracy Hub group who were arrested by the police and paraded in courts today.